hello how's it going it is me noor welcome back to my channel today as you know as you can tell from the title as you can tell from the time of year i'm gonna do the mid-year freak out tag and even though it is technically not the middle of the year when i'm filming this it's june 29th there's one day and things could change maybe i'll read my favorite book tonight who knows um things could happen right never say never but they probably won't so i thought i would go ahead and talk about some of these questions um i have the prompts written down and i have answers for most of them probably but maybe not let's see i've only roughly thought about what i'm going to talk about um so a surprise for us all but the first book that you read this year i think would probably be into the wild by john krakauer it's definitely like out of my comfort zone it was definitely like a new genre for me but i think this is the book that i've thought about the most and it's the book that i've recommended the most to people so this basically follows the story of a young boy that has dropped out of college and um and this is non-fiction by the way obviously um and he's dropped out of college and he decides that he wants to just adventure around and the big adventure that this is set on is an expedition that he takes going into alaska without like any equipment without anything just to like try and live in the wild on his own um and this book sort of starts with him being found in a bus by a pair of hikers um and yeah just like the things that he was living with how he got to that point the whole his whole journey and his whole story and also um Krakauer's own experiences with mountaineering is that the word like climbing mountains and stuff and like that desire that people have to seek the wild to seek um this sort of adventure and yeah i found it really interesting again like something i recommend to a lot of people so probably yeah probably my favorite book of the year so far but all in all like as i was looking through there was no like real standouts like this is the best and i really enjoy this book obviously i gave it five stars but uh i don't know if it's like how i was feeling at this point last year i think i'd already read whereabouts which was my favorite book last year i think i'd already read that book and that was sort of the stand out even like at this point so maybe the next half of the year it's gonna go way better let's see not bad though generally pretty good reading um best sequel again i haven't read sequels actually that's a lie i've read um i read all of the heartstopper comics like on the webtoons this past month um and so probably the second book installment of that would be the best sequel but again like i've only read that one so it's the best because it's the only one but i did enjoy them i mean if you're not familiar um there's a netflix show and i sort of watched that and then i was like let me read this this is like wholesome this is feel good and so yeah it follows these two boys um charlie and nick and sort of a coming of age story in high school you know falling in love discovering queerness uh having like a nice little gay friend group all of that it's just like wholesome positive cute the art is really cute can't complain new release that you haven't read yet but you want to honestly so many because i think books take a while to get here to india so i've been like waiting and i know this isn't a release from this year but i know happy hour came out last year and I've just been waiting to like get my hands on it. I desperately want to read it and I want to read it as like a physical book. I love the cover. I think it's beautiful and I just know that it's a book that I'm going to really enjoy. So that's a book I cannot wait to get my hands on, um, even though that's not a new release from this year. But something that I was looking at and I have had sort of on my radar before is a book called True Story true story what reality tv says about us i think i've read um i think i've read a chapter of this or something like for research um you know on jstor uh, my best new jstor store but yeah i think i've read a bit of it i really enjoy it obviously like i love reality tv i'm a connoisseur of reality television as we know um and so i really want to like read it i really like thinking about these type of things like media analysis it basically breaks down like why we're so fascinated by 
reality television. Um, yeah, very much want to read that book. Okay. Okay, most anticipated release. Um, I don't know the name of the author, but I'll put the picture here and stuff. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about this collection of essays uh, called Death by Landscape, and obviously I really like this idea of like decay and rot, which is what I'm getting from what people have talked about is what the book is about. Um, yeah, just like a landscape of decay, and I'm, again, like really fascinated by that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, can't say much about it. I haven't read it. Look forward to reading it soon, hopefully. Um, and then also actually the Taylor Jenkins Reid book, uh, the new one about Carrie Soto. I don't know the exact title, but it's like about a lady that plays tennis and stuff. So natural fit. I mean, I think I've mentioned this, but um, my brother is like a huge tennis, like we're a big tennis family. My brother plays tennis. Um, and so it's all already something that's like within my area of interest and I've enjoyed all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's uh, books that I've read so far so looking forward to it seems like a good time uh biggest surprise mm, I think biggest surprise would maybe be like Matrix by Lauren Groff I really liked it I read it this month um and it's definitely like out of my comfort zone again like based on the description I was like why it wasn't something I was like too keen to read before I heard like a lot of people talk about it and say like really positive things about it but initially um I was sort of like you know I'm not like I don't have any skin in Catholicism like I didn't grow up with the religion not familiar with the religion in that way and so like the whole nuns concept was very like not on my radar um and yeah historical fiction in general like not typically my cup of tea um and so i was like okay i mean sounds cool maybe eventually but then like the more that i heard people talk about it just how amazing it is i was like okay i gotta try it out and i really i really enjoyed it and um yeah so that was a big surprise but flip side biggest disappointment was almond by uh, forgetting the author's name, I'm terrible at this, I'm so sorry, um, but I'll put, yeah, I'll put the pictures here. Uh, Almond was a huge disappointment because I thought it would be good. How can you have such a beautiful cover that's so evocative, such a good, like, synopsis, and then not be a good book? That doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, so I think Almond was the biggest disappointment. I just have had heard a lot about it. I mean, the concept sounded beautiful, like exploring ideas of empathy and, you know, how do you live your life if that's not the guiding principle, like if you don't feel that, uh, but kind of flop, kind of flop. Uh, fave new author, I mean, okay, this isn't a surprise, but I'm very, very keen to read more of Rachel Cusk. I know she's amazing, blah, blah, blah. I really enjoyed second place. The writing was beautiful. Um, just the way the story was told was beautiful, I was underlining everything. I can't say that she's a favorite new author yet, because I've not read anything else by her, but she has the potential. You know what I mean? She's All the makings are there, the, just have to... whatever, I don't know where I was going with that. But potentially, Rachel Cusk. Okay. New fictional crush. Um, I do read a lot of romance, and this is actually something I could answer. I don't know if like I necessarily crush on any of the characters. I more so like like them together. But maybe this is also recency bias, but I'm talking about a lot of books I read this past month. But I read One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston and in that book there is this character called Jane and she's like a Chinese American punk like lesbian, biker lesbian like butch from the 70s I think that gets trapped in time and she's just cool like she lives on the train basically and um, it's just nice to people everybody likes her she's a good time and like what's not to love she's a butch she's hot first of all she wears a leather jacket automatically hot she's nice to people but also will beat them up like let's go come on a book that made you cry um, you know, we know, I cry at everything I read, like I think I say this in every review of every book ever, I'm like yeah I cried at the end, um, 
easy tears from me for anything but i think like one that hit hard is probably um let me look through my list again because I feel like I'm just talking about books I read recently, but I'm sure there's others that like weep. Homegoing that I read, uh, I think last month, definitely made me cry. Beautiful story, sweeping family narrative of two sisters that are born in the um, like the Gold Coast in Ghana and are separated at birth and follows the way that their ancestors life sort of um, diverges from their different experiences. One of them gets to stay in her village and then the other one is eventually taken as a wife to a um, like colonial officer and the way that, yeah, the way that that works. Bad description, but popular book, everyone's probably heard of it. Um, that one definitely made me cry, but yeah, I know this is, this is probably because it's recent, but also I just loved it. The Vegetarian by Hong Kong. I read this with my best friend. We did a little buddy read of it and I just found it devastating. Like at the end when it's told from the, um, so it's basically like in three parts and it's told from different perspectives in each of the three parts. But the last part is told from our main character, um, her sister's perspective. And I just found it beautiful. I think it talks about what it's like to be a woman, what it's like to be a mentally ill woman specifically, and like the way that people react to your mental illness. Very interestingly, I think the things that it says about depression and like trying to fight depression is very interesting, very evocative, obviously I cried. Um, and yeah, touched me, I think. Um, and then, a book that made you happy. So I already talked about Heartstopper, very cute. All of them were adorable, made me laugh, made me giggle, made me smile. But also um, I have to talk about Sourdough by Robin Sloan. I read this earlier this, yeah, I read it earlier this year, obviously. Um, and I really liked it. It was a good time book. It's very quirky. It's a fun book. It's basically about this lady that's working in the tech industry in San Francisco and um, has this, like, she develops this passion for a takeout place that does a slice of sourdough and a really spicy soup. I really want to, like, I really want to eat that sourdough bread and that soup. Like, I want to know what it tastes like so badly, more than I've wanted anything in my life ever. Um, but no, I really liked that and basically, you know, she orders takeout from this place and the people that run this place have to leave the country for some reason and so they leave her the sourdough starter and she starts baking and develops this passion for baking. And yeah, it's just cute, it's uh, weird, it's uh, fun, it's just cozy and strange. Most beautiful book that you have bought this year I don't think I have bought that many books this year. I cannot remember, but I don't think I've bought that many books this year. Um, and if I have, I should not have because I'm supposed to be on a book buying ban. Um, but yeah, I definitely remember I did a bit of a book haul from the Mayday sale, but nothing, nothing stands out. I don't think I've had a cover buy necessarily this year. Yeah. Sorry, dud answer. Books you need to read by the end of the year. So, definitely need to finish Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. I love that book. I'm like looking over because it's on my nightstand and it's really interesting. It is really interesting. I really am fascinated by like mushrooms and mycology and like learning all these things. It's just so hard to get through sometimes like all the science language and he's not even like a huge like sciencey writer like it's not textbook it's not jargon filled but sometimes it's just hard to like pick that book up um when there's like other like smoother brain reads i feel um so that's one i definitely like need to read this year because i got it for my birthday like in 2020 and like we can't do this so I need to finish that. I'm about like halfway through. We'll finish it this year um, soon, maybe next month. Let's make that a goal for July is to finish that book. Um, but we know how 
TBRs and goals go with me, but we'll try, we'll try. Um, also probably want to read a Zadie Smith. I think I said this like last year, but I should try to read a Zadie Smith. I have three and I've never read any of her work. Also, she's like a big fixture in the canon, I guess, of good <laughs> literature. Um, so I should read her. Uh, yeah, a lot. There's a lot I want to read. Um, I'm currently also like a chapter-ish in into Elena Ferrante's A Story of a New Name. So I want to read that but yeah all of that let me know what you think let me know if you have answers to any of these questions if you've read any of these books if you like any of these books um i will be doing my june wrap-up soon and i'll be doing my like mid-year stats breakdown in that video let me know what you think um i'll do my june wrap-up very soon and so i will see you very soon um other than that like comment subscribe all the things you can do on YouTube, and I'll see you. Bye.